Snartius gazed over his holdings in Mega Humeopolis as he picked his nose thoughtfully. His boys were becoming proper indeed. Two mighty trucks were now in his possession, and fresh snotlings were popping up all over. Soon this old Humey base would become a thriving center of activity for the Greenskins. Snortius smiled as he looked at the refurbished trucks. One had been looted and repaired after the initial invasion, and the other was captured due to a cunning trap devised by Dabrain. The loss of Stinky was regrettable, but it was an acceptable price to pay for such fine guppings. Snortius the mighty green-skinned mutant looked in the direction of Debrain's workshop, where he had sequestered himself since the unfortunate incident. He appeared to be looking for some kind of cure for Daka to the face, from which Stinky acutely suffered from. Snortius thought it was a futile effort, but he left Debrain to do it. After all, De Brain had proved to be the most cunning and capable grot in the war. Only Tree Climber and Snotbow were considered to be more loyal in the mind of Snotius. Snotius watched as Snotlings swarmed over the most recently looted truck as they began picking through the cargo. Fuel, fertilizer, disassembled farm equipment. Oh, such wondrous spoils of war that were now his. Debrain briefly emerged from his workshop and approached the truck. As he began picking through the equipment, he looked among the gubbins, and he found the disassembled harvester, complete with sharp scything blades. Debrain approached Snortius. Boss. I would like these Humi gubbins. They would be most useful for my work. De Brain glanced over to his workshed, where he had been mostly on his own and isolated since the untimely blasting of Stinky. Snortius rubbed his chin. Yes, yeah, sure. I expect you to build something proper flashy. Of course, boss. Snortius watched as the wealth of loot spilled out into the hands of his boys. A smile spread across his face. Ah, but now was not the time to revel in his own greatness. More needed to be done. It was likely that the Humies would notice that their prized truck had gone missing. They would be back, and with more Humies trucks and gubbins. At least that was his hope. So, what was Snartius's next move? Well, the green-skinned boss was amazed at how quickly he was able to move with the Humi trucks. Walking to the ambush spot took more than half an hour, but taking the truck only took a few minutes. If the greenskins could build roads between their settlements, then Gubbins and boys could move so much faster than they could floating up and down Big River on the rafts. Snortius decided to task De Furious with gathering as many snotlings as he could, starting with building a bridge over the Great River. If they could build roads in between, oh, the promise of speed was too great for De Furious to resist and he and the snots began their work, felling trees with swarms of snotlings that were sometimes hacking at them with little more than sharp stones, and then using squigs to gnaw through the leftover stumps. Snortius examined the bags of fertilizer. Now, greenskins have an instinctive, genetically ingrained understanding of technology or at least the odd boys do. Snartius, with all his bizarre mutations, might have unlocked some of this genetically stored knowledge, 
because he was able to somewhat understand the purpose of the stuff simply by opening a bag and getting a good whiff of its contents. It didn't smell that different from the squig dung that was used to make snot fire. Snotius decided to split the use of the smelly bags. Half would be used in the fields to grow more food and boys, while the other half would be set aside for perhaps making something more powerful and dangerous than snot fire itself. With the loot sorted out, Snotius turned his attention to his empire as a whole. The Humies would likely be back soon. New preparations would need to be made for the next one. Snotius needed to see what his forces looked like now, and how many new snots, grots, and orcs were now part of his mob. As De Brain and De Furious worked on their projects, Snotius hopped on a raft with a mob of snotlings and began paddling his way towards Greater Snotopia. His first stop, Big Cave. After a relatively uneventful journey, Snotius arrived in Big Cave. There were some new developments. Three new grots had popped out of the ground. Dopey, Grumpy, and Doc, along with plenty of snotlings. Ed, Ed, and Eddie continued to ably manage the site, though Double D was beginning to act... A mite strange. Ed and Eddie reported that Double D had eaten some kind of weird shroom, and they'd been keeping their distance from him since, though nothing too odd had happened aside from Double D occasionally talking to himself. Either way, work was continuing as more and more of the iron deposits in Big Cave were being extracted and smelted. No other mineral deposits had been discovered yet. And Snotius informed the Eds about the road construction project in Mega Humiopolis and told them to start shipping stone for use in said construction. With all of the arrangements made, Snotius prepared to depart for Snotantinople. After another short journey by raft, Snotius arrived in the glorious capital of his great empire. As he stepped onto dry land, the snot boss could hear guttural voices bellowing out orders. I don't care what the boss said. I ain't never seen this snottiest git until this big boss of yours shows up. I'm the boss. I, I'm the big boss here. And I just showed up. Snot here stepped out from behind one of the huts to see three orcs, one of whom had the red gobbo in a headlock, grinding his knuckles into the skull of the squirming grot. The offending orc unceremoniously dropped the Gretchen and stood to size up the newcomer. Snotius looked over the fresh new boys. In his mind, he dubbed the first one Noogie Boy for his attack on Dered Gabo. He was an odd-looking orc, mostly because he had decided to chop the head off of one of the new grots who had been named Mandark, and sewed it onto his shoulder. The head was still very much alive and bobbling about with a manic smile. The other two looked fairly unremarkable, but one looked to be the biggest of the bunch. Snotius named the big one Orcius II, and the other Humius. Now, Snotius was a good half-head taller than even Orcius because of his numerous victories, thanks to his unparalleled military genius. Orcius brought himself to his full height and puffed out his chest challengingly to Snotius. So, yes, Snotius, right? The big boss of this place. Snotopia? Snotantinople? You don't look so tough for me for a get that names a bunch of stuff after himself. The orc didn't seem to be looking for a true fight. 
Snartius was definitely bigger, that was no question. But the orc was challenging him to perhaps save some face, instead of immediately submitting to the bigger boss. He decided to be uppity. Snartius simply shrugged. Not tough, eh? Let's see how tough you are! With that, Snartius moved to give Orcius a mighty headbutt. The snot boss's forehead struck the upstart right between the eyes. The orc merely stumbled back a bit and grinned. Now that's more like it. Adbutt competition. Let's go. The orc now had his blood up as he enthusiastically hurled himself at Snotius, throwing a powerful headbutt at him. The orc's skull was a bit thicker and more robust than Snotius's, given that Snotius was not an orc but a mutant snotling. With a loud crack, he landed a blow right on the bridge of the boss's nose, promptly breaking it and sending a stream of blood dripping down Snotius's face. The other orcs cheered on their compatriot as he landed the impressive blow. Snotius was less amused as he took his broken nose with one hand and with a crunching sound snapped it back into place, blood still flowing freely. He then walked calmly back up to Orcius and delivered yet another mighty blow, staggering the orc. Back down, runt! Ha <laughs> ha! Never! Did you just get it fun? Orcius recovered himself before launching into another powerful headbutt, smacking once more into Snotius's bloody nose and splattering the red stuff all over the snot boss's face. Snotius was beginning to lose patience with this game. He needed to bring this orc down, or else he would get truly uppity and possibly challenge him for his position as boss. The two went back and forth, going headbutt for headbutt. Bloody gashes and swollen knots were appearing all over their heads and faces. Orcius finally managed to leap at Snartius and deliver a powerful blow to the boss's forehead as he stumbled backwards, his vision beginning to swirl. One more hit like that, and Snartius may well be in danger of losing consciousness. This was it. This was it. Snartius was not about to take this anymore. Headbutt contest or no, he was not about to lose to this upstart. Snartius swung his huge fist and caught Orcius by surprise. Technically, this was very much against the rules of a headbutt contest. But orcs are not creatures that value rules very much. Winning was much more important in their minds. The titanic blow struck Orcius right in the mouth, causing one of his mighty tusks to be knocked free as the green skin tumbled to the ground. The red Gobbo quickly scooped up the tooth and dodged the grasping hands of Noogie Boy and Humius and scampered away with his prize. A tooth! A tooth! Oh, I can redistribute this! A bloody and battered Snortius stood over his fallen foe and offered him a big green hand. Orcius took a moment to recover his senses before he spat out a mouthful of blood and grinned before clasping hands with Snortius and getting to his feet. Ha! So you is as tough as they say you are. I wouldn't be the biggest if I wasn't the toughest. Right. So what now, boss? Well, we got a big fight coming up. I need you and the other boys ready. You three ain't been in a proper fight yet. It's time to change that. Let's get you some proper guppings. I got some more stuff to do. But then, it's time to kill even more humies. No man do they call me. 
my mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to the latest episode of Growing the Tribe. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave a like and a comment so that one day you can earn the respect of your peers by punching them in the face. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about the management of a mighty empire of greenskins. If you would like to support me, you can do so via Patreon or PayPal or my merch store. All of those links will be down below. And if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the Growing the Tribe playlist, which should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all once again for listening. No man out.